This is the story of the lively little rabbit. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the lively little rabbit bounce like this. Let's begin now. Way back in the woods lived a lively little rabbit. All day long he nibbled leaves and roots and played with his brothers and sisters. Most of the day they would slide down a big hill. And the lively little rabbit was always in front, the first one to reach the bottom. All the little rabbits would have had a wonderful time, except for the weasel who lived in a hole in the forest. That old weasel was mean and grumpy and always pushing his sharp nose into everything. Besides, he was always ready to eat little rabbits for breakfast. So the lively little rabbit, who didn't want to be eaten for breakfast, was very careful to keep out of the weasel's way. So were his brothers and sisters. Whenever they saw the mean old weasel coming, they jumped quickly into their hole and stayed there until it was safe to come out again. And the lively little rabbit was always the first one down the hole. The weasel was a very cunning weasel too. One day, when the lively little rabbit was alone in his hole, the weasel wriggled down into it by the back door. For a minute, the lively little rabbit thought he was going to become the weasel's breakfast. But the rabbit was smart, and quick as a flash, he jumped out of the front door and began to run as fast as he could. He ran and ran until he came to the end of the forest. There were big hills and roads going up and down, and a little village. The lively little rabbit was far away from the weasel now, but he was also far away from his dinner. Oh my, I am so hungry. I could eat 200 million big carrots right now. A red squirrel who lived with his family in a nearby tree heard this remark. In one glide and two jumps and three hops, he reached a garden and came back with a bunch of delicious carrots. Here, my hungry friend, have some of these. Oh, thank you, red squirrel. I love carrots. You're a good friend, all right. After the rabbit had eaten all his carrots, he decided to spend the night with his new friend. At first, he thought it was a funny idea to sleep way up in a tree. But the red squirrel pushed and shoved him until they were both settled, snug and peaceful, high up in the tree under the stars. The stars are out, the moon is up, it's time to go to bed. I'm so glad you have a place to lay your little head. Have a deep and peaceful sleep. When you wake, the sun will come to smile upon the flowers. Go to sleep, my little friend, beneath the evening star. You will always have a friend, no matter.
the next day, the lively little rabbit tried and tried to remember his way home, but he could not. So the red squirrel brought him to the wise old owl. So, my little rabbit, you have forgotten your way. Well, don't worry. Tonight, I will help you find your home. As soon as it was dark, the owl spread his wings and flew off to search for the rabbit's home. By morning, the owl came flying back. The lively little rabbit saw that he was smiling. Did you find my home, Mr. Owl? I certainly did, my young friend. Follow me and you'll be home in no time. So the wise old owl flew close to the ground to show the way to the lively little rabbit who was hopping along just as fast as he could go. The red squirrel was hopping along too. He had come for a visit. Hello, what's the news? said the lively little rabbit. The little rabbits all grew very quiet. The mean old weasel came again this morning and ate our great aunt on daddy's side for breakfast. <sighs> this made the lively little rabbit very sad. Something must be done. What? said a brother rabbit. I think I know, said the wise squirrel. We must give that weasel a terrible, terrible scare. Now here's my plan. We're going to build a make-believe dragon out of leaves and twigs. Then we'll all crawl inside to make it go. The lively little rabbit will pretend to be the dragon's head. It was a wonderful idea. Early next morning they set to work and the wise squirrel fixed the lively little rabbit up to make him look very fierce indeed. Soon the dragon was ready. The squirrel and the rabbits looked at their work with pride. It was so very funny, especially when the owl, who was hidden inside with the rabbits, flapped his wings and shouted, Who? Who? What a wonderful dragon it was! <coughs> Meanwhile, the mean old weasel was waking up for the day. He stretched, and he yawned, and he growled, and he said to himself, Hmm. Now, what about breakfast? But just as the mean old weasel came to the top of the hill, up popped the make-believe dragon. It flapped its wings and wiggled its tail and shouted in a very loud voice. Hoo, hoo, hoo. The weasel was terribly frightened. He was so scared that for a minute he couldn't move at all. Then he finally turned around and ran. He ran away so fast that he didn't watch where he was going. And he stumbled on a rock. Ooh. Then he rolled all the way to the bottom of the hill. Ooh. He picked himself up and began to run away again, still falling down and bumping into things every few feet. All day long, way back in the woods, the lively little rabbit danced with his brothers and sisters and their friend, the wise red squirrel. Everyone was very happy. Hooray for the dragon, the weasel went away. Hooray for the dragon, we scared him off today. A little rabbit and his friends may not seem fierce and strong, but when we stuck together, well, the weasel didn't last too long. Hooray for the dragon, the weasel went away. Hooray for the dragon, we 
scare him off today. The weasel used to make us all afraid to go outside. But now our woods are safe and sound. There is no need to run and hide. slept in the daytime, asked to be excused, and went to bed. The very next day, the mean old weasel was full of bumps and bruises. Oh, me. I didn't know the rabbits had a dragon for a friend. I'm going to move far away from the woods. And I hope I never see another rabbit. When the lively little rabbit heard that, he laughed and bounced all up and down the hill. Never again would he and his family be bothered by the mean old weasel. <laughs>